now we are going to look at uh, uh, some more specifics of uh, um, the flow state aware transport using uh, the flow aggregates and we are going to look at the signaling aspect of it uh, then the network functions which perform the signaling uh, the QS structure which is defined to exchange the signaling information between the end hosts as well as the network elements we will quickly look at the use case as well so now signaling uh, protocols which are used for the FSA transport uh, in NGNs uh, are based on the extension or modification of existing protocols normally what happens is uh, that uh, the existing protocols at the uh, data link layer like Ethernet or at the network layer like IP uh, have their own default headers. Now above uh, these headers some additional information is encapsulated to exchange the QS information. Now this activity of using IP or Ethernet uh, is something known as in-band signaling. Uh, these uh, additional fields actually provide some uh, parameters their values and some indication like uh, request, response, deny, accept, etc. Uh, to implement the QS for each flow. Uh, when, when, when this flow based uh, QS service provisioning starts, then there is a requirement to exchange the structure of the QS parameters, which has to be understood by both these parties. So there is a QS structure which is carried by the first packet. Uh, now, as we know that IP is something that is connectionless and so is Ethernet. So how exactly are we going to make sure that the packet carrying QS information is not lost and the QS parameters are actually put across, then some kind of retransmission strategy or timer mechanism can be introduced. Uh, all we are discussing is the signaling in band, which is implementing the flow state aware QS provisioning through flow aggregates. But earlier, if you recall, we saw some explicit role of the network elements uh, and the services such as the service control function in the service stratum and the resource and admission control functions at the transport stratum. So our scope for now is the in-band signaling. Now, uh, there is a possibility that the uh, uh, flow state aware network, which is su supposed to provide the uh, flows with certain QS, may or may not support required QS. It means uh, some kind of uh, plan B or an alternative arrangement should also exist. So the uh, QS requirements, once uh, transported from the uh, end host to the network and to the destination, uh, may undergo some, some change uh, once the QS requirements are not met by FSA. Or sometimes the uh, FSA may deny or out altogether discard the packets containing the QS structure information uh, because the uh, QS structure is not compatible or it is not provided by the network altogether. So the network functions actually have to take into consideration the provisioning of service, the uh, request to modify or alter the service request or altogether discard it. Uh, the QS structure which is exchanged between the endpoints and the uh, FSA aware network include the available rate, which is the rate assigned from the network to the flow. So it means whatever user may request, at the end of the day, the user is going to receive what the network can offer. Then guaranteed rate is basically the rate which is the minimum uh, service requester is uh, expecting to be provided. Of course, it is the lower limit or the lower bound to the rate uh, that a user cannot get anything other than this. So it means that once the guaranteed rate is not provided, then there is a likelihood that this uh, flow state aware QS provisioning might not happen altogether. Then the preference priority is the priority of a flow within the flows belonging to the same flow aggregate. Then we have the change or direction. Basically, it is a basically a request or a response mechanism that is implemented to share information between these uh, network elements and the endpoints. Then the type of flow state aware transport, it actually involves the available rates, the maximum rates provided by the network, including ABR, VBR, CBR, etc. Then we have the second QS structure which is attached. 
Now, it is quite interesting. Sometimes the QS provisioning has to be incorporated anyways. So the end host, knowing that QS could be denied by the network if it is not met, then can include a secondary QS structure just to make sure, well, if the network does not agree with the first one, it can switch to the second one. Then we have the security structure. Uh, in case some kind of uh, a security functionality such as confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity is to be provided by the network, then security structure has to be provided as well. It is beyond the scope of QoS, but these days QoS actually is expected to contain uh, securities as well. Then the QoS structure version, because uh, with IP version 4, IP version 6, dif different QoS structures can be implemented. Then it is the uh, marker, which is a single bit. Once it is a zero, it is set by the sender. But if the flow state aware node, which is part of the FSA network, changes the QS request, then it, it enables or sets the flag. Then we have the flow sender depth. Usually what happens is when end-to-end -end request is uh, sent from the end host to the FSA network, it can enter into a network which has uh, proxies inside. It means that uh, whenever a network is entered which has a proxy server, then the flow sender depth is set to a one and it is incremented. So it means that uh, the no more number of proxy-based networks are entered it means that uh, this counter is going to be incremented. When the network is exited, we know when we are talking about network, we are talking about the aggregation network, which is a domain. So a domain that is implementing the proxy service is uh, something that is going to increment the counter and vice versa. So finally concluding, let's look at a use case. Here we have a sender uh, which is making a request uh, at the maximum rate. So it means uh, maximum rate is the maximum uh, rate that the network can offer. Um, uh, the, uh, the receiver is going to be uh, sent this request uh, in the form of a QS structure. The, of course, the receiver is going to be the end host, uh, but it is, uh, this QS structure is shared from the sender to the receiver via the FSA network with FSA enabled nodes uh, so this is going to contain the type uh, that is the maximum rate uh, and uh, the and the user insists that it's going to be guaranteed rate and it gives a preference uh, priority for its own flow. Uh, if a user does not get a response from the network, it means that the FSA is not interested in providing it uh, uh, this service. It is attempted three times. Uh, it, it's, it, it is empirical, otherwise it can have any value. But for the sake of uh, implementation, the default value is 3. If there is no response, even after 3 times, then the traffic, uh, the multimedia traffic is sent uh, without uh, the FSA enabled.